based on certain imagination, you do certain motor activity, and which try to live up to your imagination, and that finished product is what is called artwork, painting, dancing, all of them are like that. So, uh, the visual, visuality, and orality, their spaces are imagined. But their spaces, this imagination of their spaces, uh, have certain formal features which are very different. For instance, uh, sound space is uh, has one edge on one edge of sound sound space. You have sequential. Sounds come in sequence. Whereas one edge of visual space has simultaneity, two many things, two many colors come in. There is certain amount of sequencing which is in the color, and there is some amount of diachronicity in uh, sound. Diachronicity chronic is a Greek term for chronos, is Greek term for time, temporality. Diachronic at least involving two times. Uh, and synchrony is just in one time. In one moment everything is there. Like painting is there in one moment. Whereas uh, music is takes time. Music, dance, drama are diachronic. Painting, sculpture, and architecture are synchronic. But here we are talking about visuality and orality. We are talking about those art forms. The enclosures and exposures. Mm -hmm. yeah, like we would say, uh, synchronicity and diachronicity are being uh, Painting is a vis music, and a synchronic and a diachronic. Can we say the, orality, the, the oralness of visuality and visual? That's in morality kind of. We will try to see. There is some, a lot of senses are going on there between them. Both are together. Because we do have narrative videos. I mean, there is, there is no song being spoken, but the video gives a story. There is no song. Silent video. How silent video is going to give us through? So there are visual narratives. These are all visual narratives. Uh, just a cartoon without legend can speak about. People say, well, how does it speak? Those questions when you ask. So those will come. How do we are going together? Uh, but there is uh, important thing is that visuality is has one corner where it is synchronic and reality has one corner in that space, one space in that space, which is that one. So things come after another, it may be adding up to something called Shabdu Brahma. But somehow Visual diachrony doesn't add to Vastu Brahma, is very difficult to imagine. It's because sounds collapse. The sounds, when pronounced in proximity, they become one sound. But there are some sounds, some things which are not uh, collapsing. Because otherwise the entire sentence will come out in one go, in one moment. If sounds collapse, some sounds are laid out. Sounds which are laid out are are akshara. Akshara is it, it sort of splits sound in time. The akshara in visuality spreads its space. Otherwise, all sounds should collapse because sounds are known to collapse. In one condition or other condition, 
two songs pronounced in proximity of Kodas. But then they are put separately. They are put because this in between a vacuity, vacuity is introduced which makes it before after. The resistance success comes. They don't coalesce. We don't let them coalesce. So there is a temporal spread in sound like there is a spatial spread in emission. Both are there because you can have many sounds. You can have AC sound, you can have this sound, my sound. They sound at the same time. So there is a spread of sounds because many sounds will come from many sides at the same time. So there is a synchronic aspect to sound. And there is a diachronic aspect to vision because I'll show one image later. Uh, when we go to lecture four, that how simple thing like you know patch or a line moves. There is a movement. There are visual illusions. Internet is there? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. Yes. 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 You imagine you know, uh, living flower in the moss. This is still life. You know, flowers moving, moss is moving. There are stories that it has been kept by somebody in some place. Oh, this is, everything is moving in the painting. Though it's, it's purely in a moment, all portions of it are available. Sculpture and architecture. These are synchronic arts because they are all parts are available in one moment. All the painting is available in one moment. You may do roaming here and there looking at it, but everything is available in one moment. Unlike song. Sculpture also, all portions, all part of sculpture are available in one moment. Architecture also. Every portion is available at one moment. You may not be attending to every portion. It's available. In uh, music, dance, and uh, uh, drama, okay. Okay. Film, things take time to come out. Yeah. These are two divisions. Uh, but what happens? Is uh, that in the painting, interiors are all moving. It's a massive movement inside. In sculptures, it is less moving. And in architecture, interiors are at rest. Now, this is a new thing I'm earlier saying. Whereas in the music, interiors are at rest. In drama, uh, the interiors are often moving with dilemmas, justice and justice. Drama can be a lot of movement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. passions. Uh, synchronic art are passionless, whereas diachronic art are passion. passion. <laughs> And uh, synchronic arts are moral. They are not true. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, whereas <laughs> diachronic uh, are really full of uh, moral issue. You can create moral issues by painting also, but that's a different thing. Uh, but because everything interior of painting is moving. 
and in architecture, why? Because painting actually puts entire burden on the spectator to keep looking at it. It captures all of you. And the burden is put on your time. In architecture, you can switch off. You go sleep. In fact, best architecture people say is that which protects you, it puts you to sleep. It gives you a real rest. And in the architecture, where it's always rolling because you want people to come in and get out immediately. So you roll out people <laughs> from there, the rolling architectures. But uh, something has to come to rest. In there. And uh, so, like architecture of mall, is time. It's very time. It's a, the architecture is a design. Uh, but this architecture of uh, house is, is like which can give you rest, where you can leave. So uh, there is certain amount of uh, motion from this we talk about interiors. Mm -hmm. The exterior of painting is all symbolic. Interior is all draconic. The interior, draconic interiors are from motion towards rest. Architecture is, uh, you know, is that where uh, you can surrender your space and time. Indeed. And other space and time take over. Other, other space and time means space and time of builders take over. You have haunted houses because space and time of ghosts take over. And you are very resting. So you trouble you. You have uh, stories which come. So, but the rest is the uh, all the So once you have a city design or village design or a, a house design, uh, basically you have to provide for the rest uh, and uh, tranquility. So architecture is tranquil. Mm -hmm. uh, architecture which is not tranquil is is a it's purposive architecture, like uh, you don't want people to sleep in uh, railway stations. So, you can still see the railway station, but then you create the police force. Yeah. <laughs> to, architecture is not solid at all. In mall also, yeah. you can still see the rest, but then the security is <laughs> not there. So, in, uh, Whereas they were just about standards or architecture, so different mm -hmm. that uh, railway stations in India were designed so that people could sleep. In corners, they were this that. In our time, I've slept at railway stations. Mm -hmm. because, uh, mm -hmm. because that was yeah. done. Yeah. And we did that. So uh, all the also I mean on the roads, you can go on the bank of river. Hmm. These, are, these are like nowadays very great. Do it after great adventure. At least do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you go somewhere. Where uh, do you go? Rock where they stepped. Then you have some, the rock would have some privileges. And somebody would have access to that rock more than others. But this, that architecture is uh, required. Painting is not. Painting is vegetative. Come inside. Uh, music. Tranquil, whereas film is not. It 
may end in tranquility, like music may end in meditation. So those kind of things may happen, but this is basically uh, interior. It's like that. This I have not said earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And it is important. And uh, because of this, that we have to now think of color in a different way. And uh, so color, usually the design issues, uh, colors are tranquil, which are blues are supposed to be mm. tranquil, which is not true. Reds are supposed to be hot, hot, yeah. and, uh, so, but the mud is neither blue, it's more red than blue. One is very, very calming. We have the other kind of properties take over. Not a color, etc. Uh, red. The picture is red. Big picture is red. Uh, in fact, uh, the color culture of colors are very different. But people say usually in color schemes. Complementary schemes are there. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are taught in the same school. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, they are not right. Mm -hmm. Except for, you say, well, in the third lecture, when you, that space you look at it, that this, when I said that the yellowish blue is, can't be measured, or greenish red is not measured, mm -hmm. they have some features, all of which. These are fundamentally there will be two components if complement complement is possible. Rest are not. These two are there. They are hard components. Green and blue and no, green and red and yellow and blue. And only for these two we define as a proof also why these are these are two components. There is no other component. They are analogous long, long colors, which they teach you mm -hmm. in high school. Yeah. They are all false. Mm -hmm. You have many analogous yeah. uh, paintings, very you know, delightful and very nice paintings, which do not use. So they say, with well, I say, with well, it's, it's just because they are nearby, they are talking about the trichotomy or all these schemes are there. The design strings are all these. Essence could be there. So they are only halfway through that we see in the third lecture. But now, once we make a division between the visuality and the reality, which is the world space which has one corner, which is sequential, and the uh, visual space, which has one corner, which is very hard simultaneous. These two things are overlapping in our imagination. These two spaces are overlapping in our imagination. And because there's some story going on, even when you're painting, there's something going on. Uh, some words, some things are going on. Royalty is there because you eventually give a religion to a painting. Without royalty, you couldn't have given a religion to a painting. So it's all there. Uh, and uh, so once you have these two, now what is a relation color has with uh, sequencing and uh, tone or sound has? They are two ends, the rest of them are mixed up. Color 
being the feature of vision. It's a sole feature, it's one of the unique feature of vision. So it's a unique feature of vision. The other feature of space, time, other things, which brings the other features. This is a unique feature. And currently, some has the tonality in various properties of song, like uh, have uh, features of background. Uh, uh, when we go to fourth fifth lecture, you will see the difference between uh, a movie, a video, and a photograph or a painting. Because it's that in a in movie, flow is a major Diachronic mm. is a major thing. Mm. Whereas in painting, it's a synchronic. It's a major. So this one of one is important. And here, how the shadows are moving, how you know uh, light is falling, etc. is important mm. in the flow. Uh, the diachronic portion. The color is shaped with diachrony in movies. Whereas uh, sounds are shaped with synchrony in paintings. Paintings speak like uh, sculptures speak, like architecture speak, color which they speak. So uh, there is that. Inversions here. Now, uh, the inquiry which I am doing in these lectures is restricted to not too much with uh, the overlap of visual and variety, not that, but only with. Which is like color. We just look at color. And this color, maybe it's involved in our imaginations, etc. But this color has two outlets in our work. Visuality has two outlets in our work. One is outlet which is in paintings, which is pigment mm. work of art. In painting, walls, this temple. These kind of things. Uh, they are one aspect of colors. And other aspect of color is uh, what you can call as uh, not only photography but movie or video, which is not pigment technology, in which you don't think are intimate with. In both the pigment uh, artwork, artifacts, and the photo artifacts, in both the things, basic uh, thought of color is vis a vis something called expression of color. Third lecture I did with that. Expression of color. The expression of color is. Uh, Like if you are if you are making a movie here, this layer, it's a burden of uh, cinematographer and director to pick an angle to catch maximally what is going on here. It's maximally catching something is uh, catching a lecture. How do you catch a lecture? What do you do for that? So one of them is okay, keep it there and follow it. Record. Other is something. So the lecture only comes out, or, yeah. or something comes out. Some expression comes out. Some catch some expression. These two expressions put them together. One after another, they, they will really create something. So a certain amount of uh, uh, fantasia is brought out in this class. 
how to bring this fantasia out through pigment artifacts. All the photo artifacts are totally different. Okay. Because the basic thinking of expressivity of colors, like if there is something, uh, you know, if you're, if you're doing, say, attachment for a for a uh, projector, you would shoot in a way that this black of projector stands out as more exclusive compared to every other nonsense color around. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on this. So we focus on that somehow. And somehow put lighting in such a way that the black stands on this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, its projection is also not targeted because the uh, kind of uh, glitter which is coming out of the projector is also dropped when you're taking them. So you put lighting, uh, kind of thinking which goes going here, mm -hmm. which is going in the water. Others are thought of in a different way, but in both cases there is one thing common, and that is that thinking is all about memorable colors, hmm. the cognitive colors, the colors of dream. Thinking is all about them. In both, uh, in both uh, artifacts, artifact family, which is pigment, artifact family, which is photo. In both of them, the thinking rests on uh, so uh, the fourth, uh, somewhere we will deal with uh, something called linguistic colors, language colors. Every language has uh, colors as its uh, words for colors. Hindi words for colors, Tamil, Hindi, Marana, the words for colors. And uh, these words have certain uh, sort of uh, palette associated with them. So if you say Gerua color, it means certain you mean orange. It means something, not orange, but it is somewhere there. It has a palette which is given up. So Saveda is not like this white color. It's somewhat different. Double. The seven names are Hindi for it. White of marble is also very different from white of chalk. The different names for it. So uh, languages are found certain palettes as significant for communication for communication. For the communicate color. For the communicate color, you have to use some word. If I use some word with the same color is not really the Basanti Chola. Mm -hmm. this Basanti, the furious color, not said, it's a love color in the mice. Basanti. But in this song, it's a furious kind of color. Mm -hmm. Forest. Basanti is like uh, what color? It's a planet. But why should one communicate that color? Why not communicate some other? Linda, <laughs> some other kind of color. So there are twenty colors. There are colors which are very expressive. And these colors, which are twenty colors, they, you know, on language is very costly to commit a word for something. For these palettes, the words have been spent. Very costly. Cost of because you have fewer words, you have 4,000, 5,000 words in daily use. Or you may have 40,000 words, 40 words. So, 
agriculture has found different uh, sort of poetic, culturally significant colors for which they want to communicate. So some of them are derived from Bengal. Of visual and variety, not that. 
but only with uh, visual and which is like color. You just look at color. And this color maybe it's not involved in our imaginations, etc. But this color has two outlets in our work. Visuality has two outlets. One is outlet which is in paintings, which is pigment mm. work of art. In painting, walls, distemper, color, dye, these kind of things. Uh, they are one aspect of colors. And other aspect of color is uh, what you can call as uh, not only photography, but movie or video, which is not pigment technology, in which you don't think are in pigmentary. Mm. In both the pigment uh, artwork, artifacts, and the photo artifacts, in both the things, basic uh, thought of color is vis-a-vis -vis something called expression of color. Third lecture, I did. Expression of color. The expression of color is uh, uh, like if you are if you are making a movie here. This scenario. Uh, it's a burden of uh, cinematographer and actor to pick an angle to catch maximally what is going on here. It's maximally catching something is uh, catching a lecture. How do you catch a lecture? What do you do for that? So one of them is okay, keep it there and follow it. You can record. Other is uh, something. So a lecture only comes out or, yeah. or something comes out, some expression comes out, some you catch some expression, these two expressions, put them together one after another. They, they will really create something. So a certain amount of uh, uh, fantasia is brought out in those colors. How to bring this fantasia out through pigment artifacts or photo artifacts are totally different. Thing. Okay. Because the basic thinking of expressivity of colors. Like if there is something, uh, you know, if you are doing, say, attachment for a for a uh, projector, you would shoot in a way that this black of projector stands out as more exclusive compared to every other nonsense color. Or you are focusing on this, so you focus on that somehow. It's about put lighting in such a way that the black stands on this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, its projection is also not directed because the uh, kind of uh, glitter which is coming out of the projector is also dropped when you are taking that. So you put lighting, the kind of thinking which goes going here, mm -hmm. which is going here, is not very different from colors. So colors are thought of in a different way. But in both cases, there is one thing common. And that is that thinking is all about memorable colors. Hmm. The cognitive okay. colors, the colors of dream. Thinking is all about them. In both hmm. uh, artifacts. Artifact family, which is pigment, artifact family, which is photo. In both of them, the thinking rests on. So, uh, if, uh, somewhere we will deal with uh, something called linguistic colors, language colors. Every language has uh, colors as its uh, words for colors, Hindi words for colors. And uh, 
these words have certain something not orange but it is somewhere there it has a palette which is given up and so Saveda is not like this white one it's somewhat different Dhaban has seven names in Hindi for white the white of marble is also very different from white of chalk Names for it. So, uh, languages are formed, certain palettes as significant for communication, for communication, for communicate color. For communicate color, you have to use some word. If I use some word, either the same color is going to be, or, 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 not said it's a love color and love eyes <laughs> or something. But in this song it's a furious kind of color. Forest. Basanti is like uh, what color? It's a color. But why should one communicate that color? Why not communicate some other Linda? <laughs> <laughs> some other kind of color. So there are twenty colors. There are colors which are very expressive. And these colors, which are poetic colors, they, you know, on language is very costly to commit a word for something. For these palettes, the words have been spent. Very costly. Cost of few. Because you have fewer words. You have four thousand, five thousand words in daily use. Or you may have 40,000 words, 40 words. So, every culture has formed different uh, sort of poetic, culturally significant colors for which they want to communicate. So, some of them are derived from bending the Color. 
then uh, it becomes light. And black to that red becomes dark. Hmm. But then if I add white to that color, it becomes opaque. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't become light, it becomes heavy. And light, yes. nobody does that. Yes. It does not does that. But in theory, you say, you know, we add white to the color. Yeah. So dark and lightness are different. These are properties, the issues with this color uh, concept. It's not so strange. So many of the distinctions between colors are uh, difficult now. But now I've created a imagination that is just a realm of colors. We look at realm of colors. So vision would be, uh, any visual cognition would be some kind of twitch, twist, turn, warp, uh, unfold, unfold mm -hmm. these colors. Because there will be some kind of space time entering into it. Depth entering into it. Time entering into it. Flow entering into it. Yeah. In some way. To create artwork. We we'll deal with this. What is it that will end up? But then before we deal with these things, how color is uh, sort of many folds are created in colors. How many foldings and foldings are created in colors? In vision and pictures and in paintings. Before that, we have to deal with what really is color. What are the ingredients of this, uh, this space? What is it? Is it a pigment color? Is it a light color? Is it Imaginary color, what, what kind of things are these? We are calling as a color space. What are these things? And uh, is there a way to organize them? This color structures and functions. And uh, uh, sort of, is there a unified theory which can account for colors? Colors is an issue uh, which has excised uh, the best minds, at least in modern West, starting with uh, Isaac Newton, who spent a lot of time on colors, with uh, Goethe, who is a German thinker who opposed totally understanding of uh, Newton. And uh, then with the uh, room tape, and Boltzmann, and uh, then the 20th century, when the industrialization of color began. Industrialization of color is like you came with products which need to be painted, like cars need to be painted. Houses need to be painted, cigarette packets need to be painted. So all kinds of things came. So this is a color industry has come. Color industry is very big. Mm -hmm. It's very large. We don't imagine how large it is. And uh, design industry is entirely piggybacking on color industry, except for few other few things in design, which are space time related stuff and arrangement related stuff. But it is something that there is industrial aspect to color. People who, who dealt with color in variety of ways, there are of course these painter colors which are there very big. It's a very small aspect of the industry. Painter colors are like this. People, colors which painting people buy, not dental painting people, these yeah. artists buy. They are very few and uh, there are uh, total uh, amount, I think, variety wise, total in the market are around 400 something. Yeah. 
70 of them are like spectrum, maximum in one spectrum put of 70, but the many many pictures, five, six many pictures are there. So there are 400 odd tubes, which are very small. And industry was small, but in terms of colors, it's variety. Then you have people having colors of food, colors of uh, liquids, colors of the bottles of liquids. Mm -hmm. The basically view has been presented. The tinge, the mm -hmm. plastic. The basically plastic tinge of blue, which they put. It gives the idea that their water is cleaner than the other waters. Mm -hmm. yeah. That tinge, the blue tinge has been presented. So things like that. There are a uh, whole lot of. Uh, Industry people from the luminescence industry, which is which came with Edison, well, to LEDs now. From luminescence industry, how to produce variety of colors? To this computer industry, especially screens and printers, screens and printers, event, it's a very large color industry. Then, of course, there are uh, you know, colors of gems, colors of uh, which is a traditional thing, very costly in terms of the amount of money you have to pay for that color. It's <laughs> very high. So, you have a lot of industry dealing with color. And uh, clothing industry, of course, is a dye industry. It's a very big thing. There's a big boom, especially in the rise of what are called. Uh, Fluorescent colors. Fluorescent colors are reason after some It came up in first one, after first one, but there are fluorescent colors. So color is a very large thing. And it's very difficult to cover all kinds of things about it. But a uh, few things which I want to leave impression on so that next next things get better. One is the distinction which is made between novelty and visuality. And why focus on color? And there, uh, sort of, in novelty also there is color, which is which are called consonants. Consonants is a musical term. Uh, but uh, in Indian tradition they are called water. Consonants are colors of sounds. Ta 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 ta. The tones. <laughs> These are colors of sounds. And you have uh, swara, which is a body of sound, body of these colors. Then you can't pronounce a consonant by itself. Mm. So, this is swara is pradi. So is power and vengeance yeah, yeah. are They are called work. Vengeance are called work. The colors of sound. So sound also one can go in that direction. But I don't want to go for these lectures in that direction. And uh, only deal with color. Variety of colors. Yeah, matra is the length 
is a time unit. Eight matra, two matra, root is three matra. Mm -hmm. Those can't be pronounced. Huh? I agree. Be pronounced means even there is some sort of there. As a uh, present successor, it can be. Temporarily, this thing will not come with us. So I've covered this. First lecture was this introduction to car lectures and cycle of equation. Space time travel. Of this you cover, huh? Yeah. Visual or dimensional experience. Then synchronicity, motion to rest, passionless or more, rest to motion. Uh, interior of music are rest like this high bar to the dilemmas of movies. And then color as visual color, as, as a property of visual space. Mm -hmm. So color we know. Now next we will go to this. This next section is when? Tomorrow. Yes, empty place. That space is empty. Other magnitude spaces per setting. Like some like sound space. It's called Nath. Sound space. Akash. It's called Akash. So there is like where sound propagates is Akash. There is Chit Akash. Chit Akash is the Akash of Chit. Where is Chit Akash? In Chit Akash, you have uh, color space, color. And in Chit Akash, you have sounds, which is different. From your Akash, your sound travels. That sound is not known when it's traveling. So we know when it enters Chit Akash. 